So my friend, the late Justine Alexander, who was a self-taught artist, um, kind of folk art, I loved her things. And I remember I got, I commissioned her to do a piece for my husband for a birthday. I can't remember what, what birthday it was, but it was a birthday. And um, she she didn't have anything that she thought would be good for his birthday. But she said, you know, I could, I could paint you something. I said, great. So I said, you know, what do you want me to, what do you want me to paint? She asked me and I said, just, you know him kind of, what do you think? And so my husband was a banker mm -hmm. and she said, you know, I want to paint something about what he's going through and how he's doing. And so she painted a really great piece that looked like, um, and it, you know, sort of remind you of the enslaved, of an enslaved man. And it was scars, you know, she had scars on his back. She was like, because I know the things that he's trying to do up in that bank, trying to, you know, he's feeling like mm -hmm. this kind of thing. And so it was a great piece and um, love it. And he loved it. And I said, well, Justine, how much? And she's like, you know, oh girl, just, you know, just give me what you think. Just give me what you think. And I remember mm -hmm. what I gave her and it was, it was fine. I thought it was fair. I thought it was maybe a little bit more generous than fair but I wanted to, you know, bless her and let her know that I appreciated it. When I paid her, she dissolved in tears. She literally just dissolved in tears. She said, Nina, no one has ever paid me that kind of money. She said, no one has ever paid me that kind of money. And she said, and it's not the money. She said, you know, I need the money. And she did. She said, you know, I need the money and I'm going to use the money. She said, but the fact that you think that much of something that I did, I just, I'm, she was overwhelmed by it. So, and she was the first person artist who I knew, who I, you know, I knew her, she painted for me and we exchanged that way. She would not put a price on it. And so with Justine, every time I would pay her a thousand dollars for something, she'd probably give me $2,000 worth of stuff for free. You know, she mm -hmm. was just, she was so appreciative and she wasn't really represented by, you know, she was that self-taught, just trying to make it kind of artist. And so through Justine, I fell in love with not only art, but then I fell in love with artists as well. And the energy and the appreciation that they have for someone getting their expression of, you know, of the world. And so mm -hmm. that was um, great with Justine. So Justine took me to a thing with some of her friends who were artists trying to make it not represent it kind of thing. And so I bought the painting, uh, the diptych behind me at that point, just to support, liked it, didn't love it. And then I, I got it back home. And years later, I realized that to me, it looks like a sharecropper family in a little mm -hmm. house. And it looks like, you know, the, the, the ones who are sitting together, are fine. They're not, you know, elated or thrilled or anything, but they're okay. And they they take their lot in life. They're little. The, the little ones are fine. And But then there's that other one sitting over on the side who is like, I'm looking in another direction. I'm not feeling this. This is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. I'm kind of out of here. And that was my father. My father mm -hmm. grew up in a family of sharecroppers and he was the oldest. And he loved them and everything. But at a certain point, um, in defiance, unfortunately, of his father, he he said, I have to go. You know, I got to get out of here. And so he found his way to go to college. And I thought, I didn't realize it, but this is a painting that reminds me of my family, of my, of my heritage. And so it has become a favorite of mine. But for the most part, I'm like your kids. If I see it and I love it, that's the one I buy. I don't go too much deeper than that. Um, and, and so this, but this was a departure, but of the pe of the pieces, I was attracted to it and I was attracted to it because of one of my uh, life experiences that I wasn't even thinking about at the time. Mm -hmm. I think that's so interesting that you said that because I always think of sort of this two-way conversation with art, like the artist is creating something from their experiences and from their understanding of the world and what they want people to know or people to see, but then yeah. they don't necessarily have control over that, right? The viewer comes in and they get to look at the work and they bring all their baggage with them. They bring their experiences, they bring their relationships with their parents or partners or whatever. And so it's not necessarily that, um, you know, that experience that the artist 
wanted them to have or their intention behind it. <clears throat> and so I think that's interesting because, I mean, I don't know if you've had this conversation with her, but I imagine that she didn't create this work thinking about your family. You know, she was thinking about whatever she was thinking about when she created it. But for you as the viewer and the person who purchased this for your collection, you have a completely different understanding of it. And I feel like that's kind of the beauty of, of visual art. We get right. to interpret the work the way that it makes sense for us. Um, that's right. And I think that's really interesting. And I think that's part of why curating is so enjoyable for me. Yes. Because, I mean, like there's all, there's like layers to it. Of course, there's a layer of me as a viewer. I get to, you know, interpret the work based on that, but also just like thinking about my training as an art historian, thinking about the research I've done in the past and the research I do on specific pieces. You know, I think about, have I had a conversation with this artist and have they talked to me about this specific piece? Like there's so much that goes into it. And so sometimes I get to sort of be that middle point, you know, like the artist has an intention of how they want their work understood. And then the viewer comes in and, you know, they understood it, stand it based on their experiences. But as the curator, sometimes I get to kind of help with that story. Like I get to narrate a, a conversation mm -hmm. in a sense. And um, I think that maybe it's like part of what makes artwork so interesting to me and what draws me to it, like that complexity of it. The fact that you can, it can be 20 people looking at this work of art and you all have different understandings of it.